Hello and welcome to part two on my series of videos on weaving with cardboard. Today's video, this video is about the weaving process. So we'll weave the bottom and the sides of our box using strips of cardboard. If you haven't watched uh, part, the part one, which is preparing the strips, I'd recommend that you watch that. But if you just like to wing it and cut your own strips and then weave along with us, the only thing that I would highly recommend is that you cut your strips across the corrugations in the cardboard so that there are the, the corrugations go in this direction rather than the lengthways. It will make the, the weaving process much easier because these strips are nice and flexible and they bend in a straight line across the corrugations. When the corrugations go in this direction or at an angle, you'll find that sometimes the strips will bend, not bend um, perpendicular to the strip. And that, that may not be the easiest way to weave. So I'm working with one inch wide strips just because the straight edge that I used to cut them cuts that width quite quite easily, but you can use narrower or wider strips. Obviously, the narrower the strips you use, the longer it will take to weave, but you could get some interesting looking effects using really narrow strips and maybe make a smaller basket if you like, or box. I might try, you could also use narrow strips as accents, but I would recommend for your first box that you start with the basic box. So my box is going to be, this, this particular box, these strips are wider than one inch and there's four across, four across this way and three, three vertically up the sides. So I'm going to work with a box that is five strips by five strips and then three strips up. But if you want to do a different size, if you wanted your box to be four by six or four by five, three by four, you could do that as well. So for the base of my box to make it five by five strips, I'll need 10 strips of cardboard. And as you can see, these, car these strips have been well used. Yours, if this is the first time you're weaving with them, will look much more pristine, but it doesn't matter if they all end up in the same, looking the same at the ends or similar at the end. You're also going to need, you'll, so you'll need 10, for a five by five box, you'll need 10 strips for the base. And my strips are 20 inches long, just because the size of box I was using cut that size quite comfortably. You also need strips to go up the side of your box. And for, for my particular box, a 20 inch strip is not long enough to reach all the way around the side. So if I'm gonna make it three strips tall, I'm going to need more than three strips for the for the sides of the box. I'll probably need about five. So about 10 for the bottom and about five for the sides. So I'll need 15 strips that are 20 inches long. I'm also, you're also going to need some clothes pegs, quite a lot of those because yeah, you'll see why you need them. You'll need some white glue and scissors. I'm also going to use a toothpick to get the glue out of the bottle because I've been having trouble just squeezing it out. If your glue comes out easily, then you won't need a toothpick, but if you're having trouble getting your glue out of your bottle, then you might need to use something to help you out there. That's pretty much all we'll need for today. So I've got my five strips lined up here. And these are going to form the part of the base of my box. I'm also going to weave five strips across. And the base of my box, I want it to be centered in the middle of the strip. So I want to, have, when, when I finish weaving the five strips across, I want to have an even amount of space here, 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 and here. So I'll start out by, by roughly centering them and you can fiddle around with it afterwards. We're going to be doing plain weave, which is over one strip, under one strip, over one strip, under one strip, and then the following rows, the opposite. And you'll, if that doesn't make sense to you, you'll see what that means. But for this first row, I'm just going to place this first one in place. I'll lift up every other strip. And as you can see, that's fiddly. I'll slide it down here, and I'm just gonna eyeball where approximately the center is, and I'll fiddle around with it later. I'll use paper clip, or, clothes peg 
to hold this first cross strip in place. And then as you probably saw, things wobble around a bit. They'll get, that'll, that'll, that'll settle down in a bit as I start to weave. So for my next row, instead of trying to wiggle these strips around, I'm going to, wherever my first cross strip is underneath, for this next row, I'm going to fold that crossing strip over top. So this one I'm going to leave, this one I'm folding over top. And you'll know which ones because these will just lift up. There's nothing holding them in place, but you, when you're lifting up the correct ones, they'll fold over your cross strip nicely. So once I've folded all those strips up, I can let, lay my next cross strip down and then let those go. I'm going to close peg the edges. And that's my second row of weaving. Third row, again, I'm going to look to see now which ones are underneath. So here, underneath and underneath, I'll lift those back, pull those back, and I'll place my next strip. So this goes pretty fast. Row four. One more strip. And you'll notice the strip is a bit ragged. I'm not gonna worry about that at this point. I'll take care of that. In the finishing stage, there's a few other little bits that are sticking out. I'll, fit, I'll, I'll take care of those little bits that are unruly bits at the end if they're still bothering me. So at this point, I've got four strips done and I've got one more strip to go. And this is a good opportunity to measure and see if things are fairly centered. So I'm just going to take the strip, measure, oh. So that looks fairly centered right now. Interesting, interesting. Hmm. So maybe instead of doing five by five, because this feels nice and centered, I'll do four by four. But if I did want to do another row, well, no, I'm gonna show you what to do. If, things, if you find things are not centered, they're centered now, so that means if I wove another strip, they would not be centered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull, I'm going to pull these strips so that I've got a little bit more length on this one end than I do at the bottom. And that way, I can put in another row of strips and I would do the same thing on the sides if this one looks like it's shorter than the others. So I'm just going to, well, probably I should have pulled it the other way because I think this, this end is actually shorter. So I'm gonna pull these the other way. Take those clips out so I can pull that one. Put the clips back in. While holding everything down with your five hands. So my hands are quite big in relation to the box that I'm, I'm weaving so I can hold things down with my hand but if you have smaller hands or if you're weaving a bigger box you might have trouble with that and then you can use your clothes pegs to peg things in place and hold things in place so that they don't slip around. And we'll be using lots and lots of close pegs as we go through this process. So, I'm just gonna pause here for a second. Okay, emergency is over. I had a household emergency. I smelt something funny. It turns out somebody's doing some sort of a bleach experiment upstairs. Um, so, last strip. Fold, fold, and I'll place the last strip there. 
And now I'm going to make sure that all my strips are fairly snug, that there aren't a lot of um, big, big gaps anywhere. Because I found that keeping your strips snug as you work makes it a lot easier. It's things, I don't know, cardboard just seems to like to loosen up. And as things loosen up, your box starts to get floppier and floppier. And it's now. And as you're checking that, you want to keep in mind that you want things to be centered. So you want, you want the base of your box to be centered on your strips. And the reason for that is these strips are going to fold up and make the side walls of your box. And your box can only be as tall as your shortest strip. So if you've got one end that's really long and one end that's really short, the short end is going to dictate the, the height of your box. So if you want to be able to make a taller box, you're going to want to keep everything on both sides. All of these are going to fold up. So now the base of our box is done. And now we're going to start working up the sides of the box. And the si working at the sides of the box is pretty much the same process, but instead of lying your strip flat, to weave the next row, you're going to stand it up. And just as we did before, you will fold in the strips that are underneath. And then you'll lay your next strip across. Now, one thing to keep in mind here, actually, I'll do the next row. I'll do I'll, when I turn it around, I will um, I'll do it so it's facing you, the outside is facing you. You'll notice that this strip is going to be the beginning and we're going to weave around and come back here and there's going to be a joint here. So the joint, I can either place it on the inside of my box or on the outside of my box. But if I don't want to see it, I'm going to make sure that the joint ends up on the inside of my box and I'll put a clothes peg there to hold it in place, I will start to fold the strips over that first side piece. And I'm going to use these clothes pegs to hold them in place as I fold them over the strip. And this this creates, keeps everything firmly in place. You don't, you don't have to do this. You don't, it's not absolutely necessary, but I have found that if I don't, if I don't peg these in place, that my weaving starts to loosen up quite quickly and it can get quite floppy. And that does happen. Things do kind of fly out of place, but the more pegs you have, the less of a problem that is. So again, before I fold, this, this strip is going to get folded around the corner here. Before I do that, I'm going to go back and fold over every other strip. And again, it's pretty deterministic. If it's lifting up over the strip below, that's the wrong one. So you lift up the alternating strips, fold, fold the wall around the side, and more clothes pegs. Lift it over, clothes peg, and they're, go they're going to alternate back and forth, in and out. So you need lots of clothes pegs. Okay. Last one. Well, so I'm running out of weaver. It's not long enough to get all the way around back to the beginning. So what I'm going to do is I am going to glue an extra piece on. First of all, let me Fiddly, fiddly, fiddly. Well, maybe I'll, I'll glue it on first and then I'll start weaving. So again, 
I'm going to want to make sure that it's going to be on the inside of the box. So yes, if the joint is there, it's going to be inside the box. So here's my next piece. I'll double check that this piece is long enough to get all the way back and it looks like it will be. And I'm going to, oh, I said I had a toothpick, didn't I? And I seem to have lost my toothpick. So what am I going to do? I'm going to use this broken clothes peg. I scoop some glue out of the bottle. There, got some out. And to apply it on here. Don't need a whole lot. Stick that back on the bottle. Join those two pieces together, and I'll use a clothes peg to hold them in place. Temporarily. So let's move that out of the way. Move that out of the way, and we'll check which ones do I need to have folded over. And this is going to come off. Fold this strip around that side. And now things will get fiddly and some of these pegs might fall off. And I'm just going to leave that one as it is. I'm not going to worry about it right now because I want that glue to dry. But the rest of them, I'll fold them back. If you're wondering why some of my clothes pegs, my wooden clothes pegs, come in different colors. They've uh, been used in the dye bath. They've gone in a dye bath and they've been colored. So, again, folding my piece strips in, leave the other ones out. Peg things down into place. This one can go in. And now I am back to the beginning and there's just enough overlap. Oh, that was lucky to glue those two together. So I'm going to pull out a little bit more of the glue from my, my improvised stick here. And put that in place. So now, having all of these, these clothes pegs here keeps your, your box nice and firm. So now my next row, I'm ready to start row two. Now, if I start row two in the same place that I started row one, where there's, or anywhere that there's a joint, what's going to happen is there's going to be, there'll be three layers of cardboard. In the other parts of my box, there are only two layers of cardboard. The, the strip that's going across and the strip that's going up. So if I don't want a third layer, the third layer may be enough to cause a bump. If I don't want that bump sort of lined up in the same place, it might cause a ridge. I will make a point to start my next row somewhere else, a little bit further along. So this first row started here. The second row, I'm going to start somewhere else. Now I'll need to take the pegs out 
oh yeah, this was very nicely done. Okay, so now, because I put those pegs in, but I don't want the pegs in because they're going to get away in the way of laying down my next strip. So this one's starting on the inside. I'm going to start it here. And again, I'm going to fold those the strips now over this next row. And you, you're going to, in the, on the inside, you might find a little bit of a muddle. And you'll have to figure out which strip you need to pull out. Flip things into place. Turn the corner. I'm going to take all of these pegs out. But I know that these strips are all where they need to be. So I'll turn the corner and then I'll start folding them over again. And it should, so this first strip is always there's something on top of it. So you have to just move things out of the way. And then they just off, alternate inside, outside. They go wherever they were not the last time. So if I try to fold this one this way, it's not folding over anything. So I know that I have to fold it in. This one's same. If I can't, if I fold it this way, it's not going over anything. I, so I know I have to fold it out. Wait a minute. Something's going on here. This one. Ah, so. Now I know something's going on because I folded this one in and this one looks like it should be folded in as well. But that doesn't make sense because I should be alternating. So I noticed that it was not folded to the right place down here, the row before, so I'm going to fix that. And because it was on the side, it was easy enough to fix. If you find that in the middle, you might have to just tuck it in underneath. Okay. So again, turn the corner, take all the previous pegs out, and everything should be in the right place. But this one isn't because I did not fold it in last time. So I double checked that before I started to go around the corner. Now it is in the right place. So and now I've run out again, so I'm going to want to add, add another piece. So I'm going to see that this is going to be long enough to go around, and it looks like it is. So again, I'll use my get some glue out of my bottle. And maybe that's why it's not working so well. Maybe there's not a lot of glue left in it. Apply that. Close, peg it. Let's see. See if I can close peg it and keep the over under thing going. So I don't have to. remember that when I come around next time because I won't remember. There. Okay, turn the corner. These closed pegs come out. Make sure everything is positioned. It is. Slide around. Fiddle a bit. over, back and forth. Is it over and under or back and forth? So by, you can try doing this without pegging each row, but yeah, give it a try, see what happens. See which way you like. I think that the fiddliness of moving pieces out of the way here is a good trade-off for the ease of weaving and keeping things nice and um, snug. But you do need a lot of clothes pegs for this. So 
Now, let's see. Back to the beginning. Around that corner, that one's in. Now I've got extra here, so I'm going to cut some off. But again, I've made sure that the joint is going to be on the inside of the box, so I'm going to cut, cut off the extra. Blue. Not lose my stick on the inside of my bottle. Glue that in place, but let's see. Well, I'm running out of clothes pegs. Do I have one more? Yeah, there's some hiding over there. Okay. So, basically that's the process. So that's starting to, to look fairly box-like. If these um, clothes pegs were out of the way, you'd start to see that it's starting to look like a box. So basically, you will continue that until your box is the height that you want it to be. And as you go along, check that things aren't loose. So I've noticed here that this weaver is a little bit loose. So I'm going to pull it snug, snug it back up. If you, look, if you look underneath, you can see if things are starting to get loose, but that looks, that looks pretty good. So, I'm just going to do one more row just for the heck of it. And I think that um, this is going to be a three by five box. So let's start here. Yep, we didn't, I didn't start here at any point. So in, out. In, out, in. Turn the corner, pull out. Make sure that all of these are in the right place. If they're in the right place, then I can just tuck. Oops. Those pegs flying off all over the place. In. Uh, that one went out. In. Out. In. Out. So do you get the idea? And you just keep going until your box is as tall as you want it to be or until you've run out of weavers. Now, if you wanted your box to be really tall and you did not start off with really tall weavers, because as you could imagine, if you, had a, if you wanted to make, say, a garbage can size box, you can imagine how how awkward it might be to have really long strips waving around all over the place. What you can do is you start off with shorter strips just like we have, or if the cardboard box you started with wasn't that big to start with, you can start off with the short strips just like we did here and then add to them. You can add height to them just as we're adding width to some of the strips. I would recommend that just as I've mentioned, staggering the strips around the size, if you're adding width, that you don't, um, that you don't have all of the vertical strips the same length. So add one bit down here, add the next one up here. So those, those, those joints are also staggered. Again, also, as I said before, hiding, hiding the joints 
hiding the joints inside your box if if you don't want to if you don't want it to be visible on the outside so again i'm going to have to add another bit here so i've run out again it's very conveniently placed itself on the inside of the box if it didn't if this had been positioned so that the joint would show i would just trim it off so that um, it would end up being on the inside oh, lots of glue this time good 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 trim and i'm going to stop this box at three three weavers high even though i probably have just enough to do another row if i wanted to but i think i'm going to leave leave enough height here that i can trim them and talk about various finishing techniques So now I'm back at the beginning and you'll continue on with your weaving until your box is whatever height you want. And I'm going to join this piece back up at the beginning here on the inside so you don't see it again. Trim it off. Glue, oops, now I have too much glue coming out of my bottle. And so when you've got to the top, your box will look like this. Most of the weavers will be pe clothes pegged in place. And then the next video will be about the finishing technique. But I think I'm going to stop there for today and then we'll continue on with the next video later.